Welcome to America's public libraries, 17,000 of them at last count. They have grown and multiplied. In the face of wars, depression and recessions, disasters, pandemics, and technological revolutions through a desire to serve their communities in creative and inclusive ways. That commitment to service means libraries will always face challenges. Let's look at three of them in terms of past, present, and future. Preservation of past and current knowledge and finding reliable ways to share this information are a vital part of librarianship. Safely storing physical documents, digitizing those materials, backing up your files, and sharing them with the world are common practice in libraries. But keeping up with the latest best practices can be hard. And who is recording tomorrow's history, the knowledge of your community's older residents, and the events that shape your area's future? You can start your stewardship in the short term with some digital diving. The Library of Congress has online tips, webinars, and real-time Q&A for your preservation questions. The Orbis Cascade Alliance is a library consortium with an entire website devoted to digitization and storage of documents. They even have a free policy builder to help you craft a blueprint for your digital archive efforts. The South Carolina State Library actually provides consultants to get you started or help you advance. More long-term, you may want to hire a librarian with experience in preservation. This is Julie. She was hired by the Georgetown County Library and has created a digital website with 50,000 images that is visited about 120,000 times a year. She's a member of the Digital Public Library of America, which helps her partner and keep up with what other libraries are doing for best practices. If you feel the unique spaces and faces of your community are not being recorded, get a grant to buy a camera and editing equipment and learn how to use it. Interview the folks in your community, digitize their photos, and teach the next generation how to do it themselves. And keep updating. It didn't end with microfilm. We flew right by floppy disks. And tomorrow's digital archives will look nothing like today's. According to library legend Michael Gorman, equity of access in libraries is an elementary right, a social justice that allows every person in society a chance to use vital resources and services. The American Library Association sums it up with a rather daunting list. People should have access regardless of age, education, ethnicity, language, income, physical limitations, or geographic barriers. So diverse patrons should get a warm welcome, whether they're a new resident hoping to learn English or a homeless veteran who needs shelter from the weather. Library collections and programs have to appeal to tech-savvy kids and baby boomers looking for one-on-one -on -one genealogy assistance. Library spaces also need to be safe for the 56 million Americans who may not be able to climb stairs, navigate narrow stacks, read small print, or hear a question when visiting the library. And equity of access isn't limited to the physical library and its contents. It also means librarians have to be technologically capable so they can help patrons explore online information. It means Wi-Fi enabled bookmobiles should head out to reach residents in far-flung regions. It can even mean libraries need to spend some time in the local prison to help establish a library and programming there. So how do libraries grow toward universal access? First, learn about the groups that make up your community. Don't just poll library users. You need to ask residents who aren't coming to the library what's holding them back. Training is always helpful, whether you're gaining skills to work with other cultures or learning how to explain the latest technology tools. Partner with groups that have the details you need. For example, if you want to help residents gain financial fitness, the Small Business Development Center and South Carolina Legal Services will run workshops for free. When it comes to differently abled patrons, follow the guidelines set forth by the Americans with Disabilities Act in new builds and renovations. Make sure your online offerings are compliant, like including alt text on images so screen readers can tell vision impaired patrons what's on a web page. Stock up on assistive technology, like screen magnifiers and talking book players, often offered for free or at reduced cost from organizations like the South Carolina Assistive Technology Program and South Carolina Talking Book Services. In the long term, libraries can benefit from a representative workforce that understands differing groups and viewpoints in their communities. This is Javier and Silvana. They were hired to help expand Georgetown County Library's Hispanic services to serve the county's growing Spanish-speaking population. 
Not only did they help Hispanic patrons feel more comfortable, but they partnered with the local Catholic Church to establish a thriving adult literacy program. The library's bilingual story times are a hit, too. Today's public library is a place where programs, ideas, and books become the basis for lifelong learning. Libraries help their communities gain and sustain literacy skills, which in turn encourages citizenship, develops a stronger workforce, and reduces poverty. Libraries began by fostering literacy with children through preschool and summer reading programs and the provision of books that spark the imagination and a love of reading. But literacy is not just a question of reading and writing, it is also the ability to make connections based on your knowledge and to navigate through irrelevant content to helpful information. One of the important and resonating boosts to literacy is the connection between a teacher and students as they explore and share knowledge. Libraries facilitate that connection for all ages, with programming on issues such as health, employment, local history, and new technology. How do you make sure your library continues to promote a love of literacy and lifelong learning? For starters, be fearlessly creative. In addition to traditional story times, book clubs, adult literacy tutoring, and creation of a welcoming space to read, libraries can try Tail Wagon Tutors, a program that helps kids gain confidence in their abilities as they read stories to man's best friend. You can incorporate new technologies and join kids and adults in exploring them. Coding, Lego robotics, photography and videography, and cooperative online gaming are just a few examples. Grants, partnerships with local science centers, and traveling kits from the state library can help you get the materials you need. Kindergarten through third grade is a pivotal time to help struggling readers become proficient before they enter the fourth grade and transition from learning to read to reading to learn. Libraries can partner with schools to boost reading readiness in this age group and can be especially effective because libraries offer free programming and can get the whole family involved. When it comes to getting the whole community involved, don't forget about your friends at the library. Not only are they helpful fundraisers and great at getting the word out about programming, their members will also give you honest opinions about what topics will be popular and they'll have ideas that might not have occurred to you. In the long term, never stop asking what your community is interested in. Your collections, programming, and special events should inspire attendance and leave patrons with a desire to keep learning and reading. <laughs>